Today I wanted to revisit April Lauren and discuss some thoughts that I've had in the past few months. So first I wanted to go into her discussing criticisms. One of my main points in my initial video that included April Lauren was about presenting yourself as an expert when you might not be and capitalizing off of it, not just monetarily on its own, but building a platform, building a brand, being an influencer in that field and everything that comes with influencing. And we'll also try to interview experts in the field of, I, I listed this out so I wouldn't forget any of them, but of fitness experts that are at weight loss, healthy living, healthy eating, or any other field that we believe will help us each day, live each day. Anything that will help us live each day a little brighter, um, but also just people who inspire us. So just because we, we interview someone who may be on a weight loss journey, that doesn't mean we're calling them experts. Like if we interview someone and we're saying they're an expert at weight loss or for people, then they're going to have like an MD title. Like they're going to be, yes. or like, you know, they're going to be legit experts. <laughs> and, and a disclaimer, we are not saying that we are experts on anything. So <laughs> no, we are not, we are experts at our very own selves. I feel like, yeah. but aside from anything outwardly, like I am pretty knowledgeable about what I need, but I can't tell anyone what they need. So we yeah. do not claim to be experts at anything. <laughs> um, we are very passionate people about fitness though hang out with us for a little bit of extra motivation or inspiration. And maybe hearing if we're struggling with our workouts, maybe that will help you past your struggle. I know it helps me. In this clip, she talks about how she's not an expert. And if they did have experts on their show or podcast, they would be doctors. So you don't have to have a degree to be a subject matter expert. And legitimately, there are a lot of people who don't have degrees who are very good at their job, who are able to be really successful coaches if we're talking about wellness. But on the flip side, you don't need a degree to convince people that you're an expert either. And I think we all understand that just because someone has lost weight doesn't mean that they're necessarily like ready to be a coach or an expert in the field of weight loss, but that also doesn't mean that they can't just discuss what they've genuinely done. So obviously when it boils down to presenting yourself as being knowledgeable and an expert in that field where you're influencing people, both parties need to be able to determine trust and honesty to make sure that it's a trustworthy exchange of like money, information or time, whichever, as opposed to someone just like parading around as if they care and capitalizing off of that perception. And I just want to make it clear. I'm not saying like, don't listen to anyone in general, but I do think it's important to just do your research and be cognizant about who you're investing your time in and who you might be looking up to as an influence. gotten comments about how what I'm saying is not valid because I'm just trying to sell products. No, I have never felt about, about you. Yeah, my weight loss journey. And I don't take every brand deal that is offered to me. I am not some like evil maniacal genius that like knows how to pull all of these strings. So I just replace that time with doing stuff on YouTube. It's not manipulative. It's not bad. It's not, I did not do anything wrong. No. And I also didn't do it knowing that it would result in anyone ever watching my videos. There's people out there in this YouTube universe. I'm talking viewers who don't make content. Those are, it's funny. They're usually the biggest critics. People like to attack others for things that when they, they themselves maybe couldn't achieve or haven't put in the work to achieve themselves, those are the people that typically will like point a finger. Well, you only got that because you cheated. You took this stuff that helped you get there faster. Something like that, that you've been presented with a great opportunity. That's good. That's a, right. You're not doing anything nefarious. You're, you're literally just speaking about something that you, a product you believe in that you're very fortunate enough to be compensated for promoting. If someone blows you up because of a thing that you didn't even make a mistake on, but they're trying to make drama out of nowhere. Like, what is that solving? It's silly. It's just noise. In this clip, April continues to use really extreme language to deflect or diminish the point. I found it really interesting though that she's using these very extreme comparisons to try to abstain from any negativity. Oh, I'm not an evil maniacal genius. We see this sometimes with the other girls. Just this use of hyperbole sometimes. You've seen it in Chantal where she said like, oh, well, so-and-so is not a murderer. <laughs> And sure, not all critique is valid. Sometimes it's trolls. Sometimes it's people giving like unsolicited advice that you might just have to be like, okay, well, that doesn't apply to me. But a lot of the times I think, especially with some of the things I see with April is that some people are unsure or confused about the things that she's saying versus what she's showing, but it's not necessarily a hate comment. I think April really needs to understand that just because someone is providing you with feedback, whether it's in a video or in comments, doesn't mean that they think you're like an evil, super manipulative mastermind. It's possible that you might like attention and the money that comes from the platform you're building, 
but that doesn't necessarily mean you're evil or that people are implying that you're evil. It's possible for someone to take on sponsorships that some commenters might find a bit questionable without those people thinking that you're plotting. It's possible for someone to be calculating without being evil and that kind of like terminology like oh mastermind manipulating evil genius like all that stuff has a lot of moral tones to it i mean just as an aside i think people who truly manipulate others don't think that they are being evil <laughs> i don't think they really care if they are being manipulative of others so to me it's kind of a bit of a red flag if that's a thing that someone goes to as an initial like deflection or a response to criticism is like well this extreme like I'm not evil. <laughs> it's not bad. And if you don't want to hear any criticism, like judging by her nearly 100% positive comment section, I don't know if that's the case with her. Sometimes I've seen her husband in the comment section arguing back with people. And sometimes when she's responded, it's been a bit passive aggressive. So I would hope that as like a creator or an influencer, I mean, even like people in general can be a bit more realistic when going through the motions of receiving feedback and like i said not every comment or criticism is applicable and sometimes you can just agree to disagree and keep it pushing but i would be weary of painting everything that's not a positive comments or statement with the brush of like hate and using these extreme talking points and extreme language to kind of deflect the critique If my point is, if people are having an issue with it, that's not, a, I don't think that's something you're doing wrong. It's, it's an issue that they have. When I talk about criticism, it's most often um, people who are doing reaction type videos. Well, that, yeah, that's silly. Um, so yeah, so it's those types of people. Those are drama And then whenever videos. they do a video, whenever someone like that does a video on me, I get an influx of hateful comments, which it's is that's the way it is. It's unfortunate. It you really know, sucks. The, the drama videos, <laughs> I, that's just someone like using someone else's success to plug their own name and build themselves it's up. So, there. It's such it's a, a weird thing. circle it is. <laughs> because like these it. people attack me. They attack my integrity. They attack my credibility. They attack my <laughs> process, especially the sponsorship thing that's recently come up or like the fact that I have a background in communications and that I've worked like I have had a career. Like it's just so it's so weird. It's so weird to me that they put themselves on a pedestal of of moral superiority and yet they are literally gossiping. Mm -hmm. They are making they are making assumptions, reacting to their assumptions and doing that for monetary gain. It's just a gossip magazine. Yeah. And and for someone to try to tear you down, that is it goes back to the bullying as well. That's bullying behavior. And there's no place for that. It's inappropriate. There's no I don't see what purpose they're they're or what they're achieving by doing that. And it's unfortunate. Um, but, you know, it's, I look at it purely as someone trying to take advantage of someone else's success. And the fact that April made a comment saying, well, people are criticizing me for monetary gain. Like that's one of the biggest issues that a lot of people tend to have with channels like April's is the never ending monetized inspiration porn with like questionable sponsorships and building an audience based on weight loss. Sometimes, I am paid to give the recommendations that I give. That's important for you to know that I'm giving you, when I say that it's sponsored, that means people have paid me money to say what I'm saying. That is very important to know. When I am paid money, I will always disclose it. I don't just accept everything that is offered to me. It is my purpose. The reason that I like sharing my journey isn't to make money. I like sharing my journey because I know that it will help people to not go down some of the roads that I've gone down yes. or even just continue a negative trains that they may be on now. Um, everything I share when I take a sponsorship, I just want to ex define this. Now I would never recommend a product that I don't use, but I will never say that you have to have a product. Yes. That's a very different. Nothing not that I it on ever, yeah. And nothing I ever recommend no sponsorship that I ever take will be something that you have to have that you should even have. You have to evaluate whether you should have whatever it is that I'm talking about, whether it meets a need that you have, a want that you have. I'm just sharing the information that they've given me about their product, the information that I have experienced using their product, and then I am sharing it and I am paid for that space. And you're very now, honest about it and open about it as you should be. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're not, you're not trying to hide that in any way, shape or form. It's out in the open, which is by far the best way to do it.
I think this is the perfect way to abstain from any potential responsibility of promoting products from the perspective of someone giving their expert or experienced opinion, yet not acknowledging that this is the underlying message that you're giving to your audience. That's why they're listening to you. You want them to listen to you just enough for wellness and to follow along and be motivated and to get inspired in your struggle, as you said at the beginning for your podcast, but you don't want to be questioned on product promotion or specific suggestions or the clarity and direction of your channel, or you consider those comments hateful. Just because you're abiding by laws saying that you must have it out there in the open about your sponsorships doesn't mean that you're not on some level being calculating using your intention as a shield from criticism and distancing yourself from other influencers who might be doing similar things to you. Later on, we're going to see April talk about credentials and curated specific diet plans compared to templates, but she herself has given templates in the past. So I think for her, it's coming down to her intention, but she might not be considering the impact. And yes, it is everyone's responsibility to do their own due diligence in the products that they purchase and engage in. But if you're openly saying that you want to be an inspiration and motivate and you want people to follow along, at some level, you're going to have to come to terms with what your platform is and make sure that it lines up so there's no confusion for yourself or your audience. Because using your intent without considering your impacts or how you're setting the stage as uh, expert but not really an expert or experienced but not really experienced all while saying you want to motivate others doesn't mean that some people won't honestly and not hatefully consider your actions questionable or your words unclear when this is now your career. It's frustrating because I mean, I definitely, when people come after your integrity, like it's a very frustrating thing, especially when they're taking advantage in certain regards of Mm -hmm. you and your name. Oh yeah. Frustrating. Like April makes videos for monetary gain. Everyone who's monetized on YouTube is getting money if they make videos. Well, not all the time, but I don't understand her pointing the finger saying, well, you're just critiquing me for monetary gain, like as if it's bad, but her monetary gain is okay. Why is one type of video okay and the other not? It just seems a bit silly to hear her imply like, well, people just want money from my name as if you don't also make money. Touch us on criticism coming from folks who don't have their own content either, which again is just really odd. So does that mean like you have to be a creator to provide feedback, but it's bad if you're monetized? Am I allowed to look at her form in some of these videos and say, I don't really think that you have the best form because I have a channel, but then by her logic, I shouldn't put ads on it or use her name. I just worry that this line of thinking could turn into like, well, I am better than the other people who are in the same realm as me when everyone's doing the same thing. When they said, you'll never get critiqued by someone who's doing better than you, (laughs) this like, this whole conversation is really turning into like, just a big like litmus of like, who's allowed to say what, which I think can potentially not be a good line of thinking. Here, oh, you'll never get critiqued by someone who's doing better than you. It sounds like a really competitive attitude. I just feel like that kind of tit for tat mentality can sometimes have you ending up really stagnant because if someone provides you with feedback and you immediately, like your gut reaction is, well, what about you? You're not doing better than me. Like if you're immediately defensive, it's like, are you really that confident in the things that you're doing? And by what level are you judging who's doing better? I would be wary of setting these types of parameters and standards for who you will and won't listen to because what they're saying so far are kind of things that could keep changing or fluctuating if they wanted it to. Especially talking about if someone's doing better or worse than you, it just seems like a really good way to like dismiss things that aren't purely positive or only what you want to hear and kind of like move the goalpost that you might unfortunately end up being only surrounded by like yes men or only surrounded by people who tell you what you want to hear to where there's no challenging voice in your life. And I don't mean challenging as like a fight. I mean like if you agree to disagree or being able to go through the motions of conflict resolution, being able to communicate why you disagree with people, have stimulating, challenging conversations instead of, oh, well, they don't fit the bill for who I'm gonna listen to. And all the things that are on the bill could change. I feel like a lot of the women in the girl verse, like Amber verse, whatever. <laughs> have said similar comments like this, like, oh, well, if you have or haven't lost weight, or if you're overweight, or if you're thin, like you can or can't comment on, or like you don't even show your profile picture. (laughs) It's that kind of mentality that again, can lead you to just having yourself surrounded by yes men. (laughs) 
I wanted to touch on as well, I think this conflict between actions and words can result in something that a lot of us notice. And it's not that we don't want April to reach her goal. I just personally wish that April would not depict things with such like hyper positivity. It can feel like a little bit of just never ending patting yourself on the back for like every single thing. And I know some people have commented about how this might be like toxic positivity. And a lot of the times when I watch her videos, I feel like it goes beyond genuine optimism and like skirts the line into like curated hyper positivity. Let me know if you feel the same way down below or if you feel like you can also kind of sense the difference between when someone is being like genuinely optimistic versus when it flicks over into forced or curated hyper or toxic positivity. An influencer is there to literally, by definition, influence you to buy something, to do something, to, to take an, a certain action. Usually they're pushing products, they're, they're using their looks, their, their, whatever they're doing, whatever they're presenting, they're using it to push products, to promote things as a, you know, affiliate or whatever it is, a spon sponsored person. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not poo-pooing that whole idea. That, that's fine. I, and I'm all about people doing that as long as you're promoting positive things. It, it's just, it's not, it's not something that makes sense, right? Because now I'm trying to influence you to buy X, Y, Z that may not be what's best for you. It may not be appropriate for you, but yet I'm pushing it. I'm influencing you to buy it because that's my job as an influencer, right? Influencers can inspire and they can motivate people. And that could be the positive side of it. However, they're also not, a lot of the time, not all the time, a lot of the time, they're also showing things that are very often not appropriate for most people, or in some cases for anyone to do. So this is the nonsense I'm talking about, right? Or people who film these like over the top cinematic things. I'm all about cinematic video, right? That's great, but it's gotta be showing things that actually are good and safe and responsible exercises or giving good, real, valuable, legitimate advice rather than stuff that's just gonna feed the algorithm. And yeah, I know I get it. They're, they're promoting, they're, they're rewarded sometimes for doing this. You know, people love their videos and that's it. And your intent is clear to me. It's always been clear. Your intent is to help your viewers, is to send this positive karma, this positive messaging out into the world and to really do what you can to improve people's lives, show your journey, be very open and honest about it with the intent to help others. In this clip where Fit Lab is talking about what influencers do, I found it really interesting because like he's describing April, like April is an influencer. FitLab says that her intent is to send positive karma and messaging into the world, sharing her journey with the intent to help others. But then he talks about how she doesn't fit the bill of what he just described. You see the confusion? So surrounding yourself with someone who will kind of enable his cognitive dissonance. I mean, April even says she's paid to give the recommendations that she's giving whenever she does take on a sponsorship. Um, people can advise you on what to do. They can share what they're doing and what works for them, but they shouldn't be creating tailored programs for you outside of having being a dietitian. Um, and there's lots of health coaching. So like you can get a personal training certification. You can also get like a nutrition counseling certification, but typically that's like $300 an add on for to add on to your cert. It's not the same as like going to school and becoming a, a professional in that yes. field. All of that. That's just a red flag to be cognizant of when you're watching people and they're selling like personalized food plans for you. Are they qualified to do that? Because probably not. If you're doing, if you're seeing it on YouTube, you're pro they're probably not even qualified. So if they're they're probably not really offering a personalized plan, guaranteed. One, most likely, it's probably like a template, and they're going to provide all of these things that they're not qualified for. Oh, that could be a, a red flag. <laughs> yes, because while yes, if you eat their diet, it might work. You might get results. What what my channel is about and what I'm about, what my health journey, my weight loss journey is about is finding sustainable ways to lose weight. I want my channel to on YouTube to encourage people to do for themselves because what keeps my pendulum swinging in a stable, slow manner, not going too high on either mm -hmm. side is that slow, sustainable change, but it's personalized to me. I don't understand why is it okay to be critical of other influencers who are doing that same thing at its very base level, but not April. No one is saying, or I'm certainly not saying that people shouldn't make money or that she shouldn't share her journey. It's just, especially when you're throwing out like so many numbers and like working up a sweat and like how it can come across very curated. If people are confused or offering commentary, and if a lot of people are feeling that way, it might be something to consider instead of like distancing yourself from even considering yourself an influencer. <laughs> from what I see, a lot of people are not accusing April of cheating in weight loss. I feel like people are accusing her of acting very performative in the field of fitness, promoting processed products like protein bars and relying on the phrase of slow and steady wins the race 
to just be never ending inspiration. Would someone have purchased those bars without April's recommendation? Again, it's just be wary of trying to explain away any and all behaviors that the audience might have some questions about. When I spoke in my previous video about April and a few other influencers, I made it a point to say that like, usually the more successful influencers who have really good genuine audience retention and they have proof of their messaging and they make a very big effort to not ever confuse their audience with their messaging and their goal and their intent, especially when talking about the uh, brand deals or sponsorships or things that they might promote. Making sure that your audience is not confused about your messaging and your direction of your channel is really important. With April, I think the confusion that I personally may feel and some other folks I've seen in the random comment sections can be exemplified in her presentation. When your actions and your language don't match up, people are going to default to what they can see. I know that YouTube isn't a formal speech or presentation, but your body language and your expression matters so much. How you behave around the words that you're expressing and feeling can tell a lot. All of this culminates in how credible you're perceived and how trustworthy people feel you are. If there is a disconnect between your body language and your words, people are going to default to your body language to try to determine what the true intention of what you're saying is. So even when April tells us all of the stuff that she's doing with like, her time, her diet, her wellness, her fitness, and if some of us feel like it doesn't add up, respectfully, I just wanna to touch on another point. Personally, I feel like one of the biggest disconnects we have with this is because of how she's presenting it. Like, super giddy and super cute all the time feels really performative, especially when you're like talking about things that may have gone wrong in your fitness journey. And I don't wanna accuse her of like, faking things, but it comes off as really performative when you're just constantly smiling, like staring into space. A lot of people are gonna be like, okay, I hear you telling me these words, but your eyes and your body language, it's not adding up. I really appreciate it at the end of her walk. Uh, again, that should indicate to you <laughs> how old my notes are, where she was kind of cranky at the end of her walk. Her husband was filming her and that was kind of like a breath of fresh air. I really appreciated how authentic it seemed. We got a glimpse into her real emotions and it wasn't just like curated happiness. As I said, your body language can be a really big gauge for authenticity. And I guess it kind of goes back to, is it authentic optimism or like, fake hyper positivity, but I wanted to talk about authenticity. Authenticity is a really huge factor in likability. If you're not perceived as being authentic, then it's gonna be really difficult for those people to see you as likable and to believe what you're saying with conviction. As an example, I've seen so many people give this specific reason as to why they used to like Alexandra Rodriguez. They used to find her so genuine and authentic and therefore likable, and then somewhere along the line, they felt her authenticity waned and then her likability went along with it. And this can really be a difficult balancing act if people expect you to behave in a way that is not authentic to your true self and then you end up trying to people please and change your behavior. Bringing it back to April, I would never expect her or really anyone to air their dirty laundry online or show really negative sides in public, like on YouTube. But I think you can maintain some privacy and have that authenticity come out in the videos. If a lot of us are feeling that the videos are too performative and it's like curated positivity combined with influencing in the health sphere, that can put some people off. I think going forward for April, it would really do her well to figure out like what honesty and authenticity truly means for her and her platform and her channel. And in turn, avoid that cognitive dissonance of like, anything that she might perceive as negative. How does authenticity translate into her presenting herself in front of the camera? Is it a bit performative right now? Maybe a little bit less. <laughs> I think people would like her authentic self as long as it's rooted in what's real. And I mean, for anyone in general, as long as you stick to what's honest, <laughs> and as long as you stick to reality. As a lot of us know, it just gets really tricky when it's under this umbrella of weight loss. You know, when you're adding in all these numbers, when you're adding in all this expectation of weight loss, I think it's gonna be really difficult to balance like all the numbers that she's putting out. Um, recently, like her body composition numbers caused quite a stir. As soon as you start adding in like numbers and calories and weight, it's kind of the easiest thing to clock and calculate with people. I mean, even with her like, progress photos when your before photo has like your shirt pulled up and your stomach down and then your progress photos have your pants and shirt like covering your belly those are things that can be really obvious to a lot of people and then 
if you don't allow what you perceive as negative comments, then it can kind of be like, what are you doing? Like, are you being honest or are you just capitalizing off the idea of successful weight loss? Chikara Transformations did a video on April Lauren where she talks more about toxic positivity, so I'll link that one down below. The one thing I worry about with April is like if she is curating this hyper positivity and if it ends up being a bit too like inspiration porn forever or if things don't go as well as she is expressing <laughs> compared to like what we can see. You don't want it to end up like Amber. Not saying that Amber hasn't like manipulated people or played a hand in her own channel, but you don't want it to become where people think it's acceptable to like be hyper nitpicking and demand ridiculous things from you because they've already considered you to be a liar. I just worry, I mean, with anyone in general, the amount of people who like want to be influencers, if you're faking something to maintain your influencer status, that's kind of a red flag. I want you to be able to hang out with us for a little bit of extra motivation or inspiration and maybe hearing if we're struggling with our workouts, maybe that will help you past your struggle. Hey everyone, it is editing Tiff again. <laughs> I usually try not to pop up, but sometimes as I'm editing videos, I'm like, oh, I just really wanted to clarify that point or make an additional point that I may have missed. So talking about April's channel and the concept of sustainability with your audience, I think in the past 10 or even five years, the way that we've seen the idea of an influencer as a career really ramp up in our society can be really something that a lot of people want to strive for. It can be really a goal that a lot of people want to have. And if the goal is to influence, then I think that's where the integrity starts coming into question. You know, April mentioned, oh, well, people are questioning my integrity. There's clearly a reason why so many people enjoy these influencers. And I just want to say, like, I don't hate them. I do enjoy watching some of their content. I certainly don't. And I don't think other people want to see them fail. I think a lot of people want others in general to succeed. You know, I'm looking forward to seeing what these women do with their channels. But I think the biggest problem that a lot of people maybe have run into in the past and that we're seeing run into now is that you cannot manage your audience retention or control your likability when there's this undertone of focusing on the influence and wanting to be constant inspiration, like trying to fit a cookie cutter mold that's guaranteed to give you success instead of just being who you authentically are and creating something that is genuine and authentic to you and then the influence comes as a side effect from that. Being authentic to yourself and creating things that are original in the sense that they're your own original creations, yeah, we can argue about like how unique people are in general, but if you stick to that authenticity and creating something original, then that's something that you can manage. I do hope the best for her, as with anyone I talk about. I hope she reaches her goals. I don't want anyone to experience hate. But just being conscious of like positive affirmations over and over again without the honesty behind it to herself or us won't get her the goals that she claims to be knowledgeable about or maintain the audience who's cheering her on for it. So I'm excited to see where her journey takes her she can bring in and think about what authenticity and honesty looks like for her without succumbing to trolls who demand silly things and realize that it might not be good to continuously move the parameters of who you will or won't listen to and hopefully realize that not all critique or commentary is hate because you don't want to end up in an echo chamber. As always, I'd love to know your thoughts down below. What are your thoughts about diminishing criticism with these extreme comparisons? Do you think that you ever tend to pick up on inconsistencies when someone's talking to you? if you see a disconnect between their body language and what they're actually saying. How do you feel when you think someone's being inauthentic? Does it affect you much as a viewer? Let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching and wherever you're in the world, I hope you're having a beautiful day. Bye.